The Bible talks about little faith and it talks about great faith. Little faith becomes great faith because you go from one battle to the other that's more severe than the past until you get from the Bush League to the Major League. Great testimonies come from great tests. Great triumph can only come from great trials. Every stumbling block will become a stepping stone. Every opposition will become an opportunity. Faith is not believing that God can. Faith is believing that God will do it now for you because you ask him to in faith believing. Can I get a witness? Is faith important for daily living? Absolutely. Just try living one day without it. When you stop exercising your faith, you lose your faith. When you feed your doubts, doubts will starve to death. There's, there are a thousand ways to please God, but not one of them will work without faith. Faith helps you to walk fearlessly, to run confidently, and to live victoriously. Can I get a witness to that? God is not moved by your emotions. You see and hear people pray, Oh, please, God. Please, God. God wants to answer the prayer more than you want it to be answered. But he's waiting for you to demonstrate faith. The Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, you hear this, faith is visible to God. You don't see it, but God sees it. It's like currency. When you demonstrate faith, God knows whether that faith is pure or where it's nothing but em emotionalism. How strong is your faith? It only is as strong as the last battle you've won. That's how strong it is. In my youthful ministry, I, I broke my crowd of this. People would come to me and say, I want you to pray with me that Jesus would help me, help me, I want you to help me carry this cross. I said, no, I'm not. Jesus gave it to you for you to carry because he wants you to get strong. If I carry your cross, you're just going to be a weak Christian all your life. You carry that cross and you carry it with joy. You're going to get stronger because the next fight you get in is going to be a lot worse than this one. Get ready. Now, people really don't like to hear those kind of sermonettes, but that's absolutely the truth. How strong is your faith? The story is told of two nuns who were driving across West Texas, and you can drive across West Texas forever. West Texas is living proof God took a nap. No offense, Midland. And the nuns ran out of gas and they stopped their car. They were nurses at the, at the hospital where they worked. And uh, a farmer came by and saw the ladies and he had one of those big diesel things and gas things, pumps in the back of his truck. And he said, I don't have a, I don't have a container. They said, well, we do, it's a bedpan. And they filled it up and the farmer drove off and they started paying, pouring the contents of the bedpan into their car. At that moment, the local pastor passed by and he said, that's what I call real faith. <laughs> that's strong faith. Is living with confidence important to you to live a successful life? Just try living a day without it. When you go to the bank, tell yourself as you deposit your money in there, I'm, I'm never going to see this money again. They're stealing my money here. I'll never see it again. Actually, that happened one time in the Great Depression. My dad went to the bank and couldn't get his money out of the bank because Franklin Delano Roosevelt froze the accounts. I'm not going into that because some of you get paranoid already. <laughs> uh, you can say when you go to the doctor, the doctor tells you you need an operation. People say, well, this guy, he just wants my money. So 
So I'm passing out three times a day and hemorrhaging when I climb the stairs. I'm fine. There's, I'm well, I'm sure. Nothing wrong with me. Let me tell you something. A good doctor one day will be the best friend you can find. The Bible says have faith in God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. The Bible says according to your faith be it unto you. Think about that. You cannot proceed in life further than your capacity of faith. God doesn't shut you off. You shut yourself off by believing less than God has given you the authority to believe. When he says nothing is impossible, he means nothing is impossible. What would you try to do if you knew you couldn't fail? That's what God is saying. What would you try to do if you knew you couldn't fail? By faith, Elijah was translated into heaven in the chariot of fire. Some Christians I know would say, I'm not going in that. Long before Hollywood and Steven Spielberg produced close encounters of a third kind, he went to heaven in a chariot. I know some of you singles would like to have a close encounter of any kind, but that's how it went. By faith, Noah built an ark in a world that had never seen rain. All they had had was dew. And Noah was telling them, there's going to come so much water, this boat is going to float, and it's going to be the only source of redemption. They thought he was crazy. So without public approval being in his side, without a government grant from OSHA, he threw on his Samsonite luggage with lions and tigers and took a 40-day cruise because that's what God asked him to do to the salvation of the world. By faith, Abraham was 100, Sarah is 90. And Abraham went home and said, Honey, turn off the television. I've just been to the Wednesday night prayer meeting and I've heard from God and you're going to have a baby about this time next year. Sarah started laughing. I think it was pure hysteria. That night, God came down in that tent and cranked Abraham's dead body. Sarah felt a new feeling. Without Niagara or Viagra, sparks flew from Dan to Beersheba. From the womb of that twice dead woman came the son of laughter nine months later. Nothing is impossible with God. Say it with me. Nothing is impossible with God. Point. When God tells you a miracle is coming, get ready for the miracle. The miracle is going to happen. Well, I prayed last night and nothing's happened yet. God's delays are not God's denials. He has his time. He will get there. But the miracle is coming if you, with faith believing, will release it in heaven. If God sends you fishing for Moby Dick, take the tartar sauce. You're going to catch the fish. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be royalty, to identify with Jewish slaves that were going out into the wilderness. By faith, the fathers of the church, the Bible says, subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They stopped the mouths of lions. They lived in caves of whom the world was not worthy. Child of God, we as a people right now in this nation are being surrounded by the forces of hell. The prince of darkness is in his demonic, uh, in his demonic efforts is trying to destroy the gospel message of Jesus Christ that's in this book. We as a nation are living in a dimension of anxiety and fear and depression and resentment and insecurity and rejection and discouragement. Those are sevens, Satan's seven weapons of warfare. Have faith in God. Our God is an awesome God. He's the God that cannot fail. He is greater than your problems. He's greater than your enemies. He's greater than the mountains you're trying to climb. He's greater than the giants that are threatening you. He's higher than the highest. He's greater than the greatest. He's wiser than the widest. Have, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Nothing is impossible. Give him praise in the house. Confidence, confidence is not inherited, it's developed. Faith cometh by hearing. Again, the word cometh is a Greek continuous verb. 
continuance verb. It means it starts little and it gets bigger as you exercise it. Just as you go to the gym and you pick up a 25 pound weight before you can pick up a 50 pound weight, before you can pick up a 100 pound weight and a 200 pound weight. It is a progressive thing. Like it or not, you are where you are because of the exercise you've given your faith or failure to exercise your faith. You are bound by your own self limitation. Period. That's what God is saying. I read the story one time of a Georgia sharecropper who presented himself to his church denomination for ordination. The ordination committee was trying to develop what his qualifications were, what were his limitations. And the chairman of the ordination committee said, uh, do you know the Bible well enough to preach, sir? He was a sharecropper. And he said, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So he said, what part of the Bible do you know best? He said, well, I know the, the book of the parables the best. And they said, the book of the parables? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, let's hear it. He said, okay. He said, there was a good Samaritan who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thorns. And there the thorns sprang up, and they choked him half to death. And he said, I will arise. And he arose and he came to a tree. And he hung in the limbs of that tree for 40 days and 40 nights. And the ravens came and they fed him. Delilah, she came along with a pair of scissors and she cut him down. And he fell on stony ground. And then he said again, I will arise. And he arose and he came to a wall. And Jezebel was sitting on that wall. And she mocked him. And he said, throw her down. And they threw her down. He said, throw her down again, and they threw her down again. He said, throw her down seven times seventy, and they threw her down seventy times. And great was the fall thereof, and the fragments that remained were twelve baskets full. Verily I say unto you, whose wife is she going to be in the judgment? Now that's all in the Bible, but it's not quite. <laughs> the leader of the church said, what makes you think you're called to preach? He said, I was plowing and I saw in the sky, PC, preach Christ. He said, that can also mean plant corn. 